because um, I mean I could you know flip through this uh, whole debate about what Andromeda Galaxy was, but I think I can reenact that debate a little bit better with the help of simulation. So I'll leave it to you to read this on your own. But what I'm gonna do is let me run the simulation and um, show you a visual of um, what people were looking at and uh, why it took us so long to figure out that Andromeda Galaxy is another galaxy like our own. So, so I think to set the stage, you have to imagine, uh, this is leftover from last time when I took a screenshot. Let me just advance board to, um, so let me set the stage here. Um, where we are now in the kind of a history uh, or when we are, uh, you have to imagine we are at a stage where we do know quite a bit about the neighborhood around the solar system. We even know, uh, wait, get rid of all the labels. Um, can I put grid? Yeah, we even know that uh, we are in a galactic plane and we have a fairly good sense of what the structure of galaxy looks like. So a few like this. So this is about 6,000 light years away. This is the limited view of uh, the, the Herschels who made the first map of, um, wow, they're so dim, who first uh, made the first map of the galaxy or attempted a map of galaxy. This is their view. <laughs> um, compared to what we know now, it's uh, quite limiting. We now know that galaxy is much larger than 6,000 light years. It's about 100,000 light years across. So that is the closer representation of our galaxy, center over there. And um, where the, our sun is, is in the outer edges of the galaxy. So all this, this is all known at this point, um, at, at the time that we are considering. So, so with that perspective in mind, let me uh, bring us near Earth so that as we look at the night sky, uh, what we see is um, reflective of what uh, people see. Am I in the correct? Let me just to make sure I'm okay. I'm correctly oriented. I want south to down, north up. <laughs> okay, let me turn off the orbit. And um, so when you're in Earth orbit and you look around, what you see is um, quite similar to what you would see from Earth. I mean, it's basically identical. It's not that different. The one big advantage is that you don't have atmosphere. So it's uh, um, you get much clearer view of the sky. You don't have to worry about clouds. You don't have to worry about the seeing. That's why Hubble Space Telescope is in the atmosphere in low Earth orbit. So um, yeah, so I turn the constellations on so that we can kind of orient ourselves and we can, so, uh, that's the uh, that's the the big dipper and all of that. Uh, Andromeda Galaxy is named after the constellation it's in. So let me find Andromeda. I don't know where that is. That's our sun <laughs> from out in space um, because there's atmosphere. You can see in the general direction of the sun without obscuring everything else in the glow. Ah, there it is, Andromeda. So you can already, I think, see what we refer to as Andromeda Galaxy. That is Andromeda Galaxy. Let me center that. And um, let me zoom in with the, the way a telescope might zoom in. So that's the way. Um, and Andromeda Galaxy is quite large. It, uh, I was actually surprised to find that. It's about three degrees across. So, and it has the visual magnitude of about uh, three point something, uh, brighter than magnitude of four, which is around what you can barely see near cities. Um, if you are in an uh, area of absolute darkness, you can see down to magnitude six around the cities. Magnitude four is probably the dimmest. So Andromeda galaxy is something that you might be able to see yourself, um, just naked eyes, 
So it's fine to some area where it's dark with a clear sky. You can see something like this. Well, maybe not like that. Um, your view might look something closer to that. That fuzzy spot is Andromeda galaxy. And, and uh, there was a great debate on nature of what that was. And during this time of debate, uh, people knew about uh, galaxy clusters. Or not galaxy clusters. They knew about star clusters. They knew about globular clusters. In fact, one of the people taking side on that debate was the a guy who uh, mapped all those globular clusters around the Milky Way. And, um, and uh, the subject of the debate was, is the Milky Way galaxy basically uh, what we uh, in the is it basically the visible universe and everything else that we might see like the star clusters are orbiting the milky way galaxy so with andromeda um it, so it could have it, for all people knew this could have been another uh, globular uh, star cluster uh, or um and and when you look at this uh, through a telescope, um, you can see certain features. I think uh, the telescopes were powerful enough for people to see these um, kind of dark bands, uh, which now we associate with the spiral arms. And um, But just uh, looking at it, um, you can tell how far away it is. And the nature of what it is, it depends on what your estimate to that distance is. So here you see, you know, distance is 2.57 million light years away. And um, if uh, this distance instead had been 100,000 light years away, then we would say that's another globular star cluster. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it, it's not quite far enough away that it could be another galaxy like uh, Milky Way. And that, that debate was uh, settled when um, when uh, when Hubble, <laughs> not the telescope, but the guy who the telescope is named after, when Hubble, um, he uh, was he was working with the, what was the largest telescope then, and he was able to um, zoom in enough here. And I don't think this simulation actually has enough data. So so you know so this is where the simulation runs out, and I'll have to ask it to just imagine that. Uh, as I zoom in, that some of these fuzzy spots actually resolve to individual stars. He was able to um, isolate one particular star that showed the light curves that are similar to Cepheid variables. So using that as a standard candle, he was able to um, figure out how far away it should be because with the standard candles, we know we can figure out their intrinsic luminosity. So um, comparing that with their apparent brightness, we can make the argument that it must be this far away uh, for it to be this dim. And he, Hubble's initial estimate was around a million light years away. And that settled the debate, million light years away. That's far enough away that for it to look this large and this bright, it had to be another galaxy containing as many stars as the Milky Way galaxy. And uh, let me end this with uh, the universe map view. So this is, oh wait, I think that is showing, um, oops, uh, let me just try to select our own Milky Way, center that. Okay, <laughs> so that's the universal view. Um, so let me just uh, zoom out from the view of the Milky Way in this universe map view to show um, where Milky Way and other galaxies are. And uh, as I zoom out, you should first begin to see other dwarf galaxies that are near Milky Way. So this is um, one of the dwarf, irregular dwarf galaxies that are orbiting Milky Way. You can see that it's quite close. 160,000 light years away. And there are other galaxies that are near Milky Way still. And these are all gravitationally bound to us. The Milky Way is the big dog in our <laughs> general area. And uh, let me just keep zooming out. And at some point, I'm going to see Andromeda galaxy. Uh, I think. Uh, Barnard's galaxy. Um, 
Huh, I actually don't know about that one. Um, <laughs> let me just go back to selecting the QA. Um, is that Andromeda? Maybe I should turn on the labels. Let me turn on the labels so that, okay, we are not doing exploration mode. Let me just uh, uh, turn the labels on so that when Andromeda comes into view, I can say, there's Andromeda. Um, wait, Andromeda should have already been in the view. It should have been in the view around here. Let me just, ah, there it is. Um, I was looking at it in the wrong angle. So there's the Andromeda galaxy. So let me turn off the labels. And um, this is uh, our local group. Uh, so you see a collection of galaxies near Andromeda. That's one uh, side of the dumbbell of the local group. And this is the, the site around the Milky Way. And these kind of collections of the dwarf and other smaller galaxies are um, um, around the larger galaxies of the Andromeda and Milky Way. That's our local group. It's uh, um, this uh, 2 million light year um, or 3 million light year kind of size. That's the, uh, that's a, uh, compared to the distances that we are able to see now, that's actually quite uh, near us. So I, I think I've done this uh, Juma view before, but let me do it one more time. So our current view of the universe, and let me make sure that I don't have my, uh, I want to make sure that my filter's on so that all the procedural objects, they are not here. So everything that's in this universe map should uh, match, to a, match to a real object. Okay, start out with the view of Milky Way. <laughs> and let me zoom out until we are at a range where we can see um, our neighbors. Uh, so that, that those are still, those bright dots are the, the Magellanic clouds, the nearest dwarf galaxies, maybe not nearest, um, most visible dwarf galaxies. And uh, that's Andromeda, or that's one of these are Andromeda. <laughs> Um, okay, that's Andromeda, and I think that's Triangulum. That's our local group. And let me just uh, rotate around a little bit so that you can get a sense of this uh, three-dimensional um, shape of the local group. Okay, let me continue to zoom out further uh, until you see the until you see the the visible known universe. So I'm gonna continue to zoom out. We are at about 50 million light years in diameter or radius, 100 million light years. And our view of the known universe goes out to 10 billion light years. So at this scale, we are at about a billion light years. Oh, okay, this doesn't go all the way out to the farthest, I guess. Um, so the farthest uh, detected objects are at about 10 billion, 12 billion light years away. But at that distance, detecting everything is harder. Um, so um, so the simulation tops out at uh, 0.8 billion light years, which we'll have to be satisfied with for now. And this is the view of the visible universe. Now. There's a feature here that I do need to caution you about because I think I've mentioned this before and uh, at the time uh, we haven't quite covered everything we cover now. So uh, this might have different meaning now. So um, at this scale, you see what appears to be like a, kind of a pattern here, almost like an hourglass shape. And I want to point out that this is an observational artifact. Artifact being that you can see this when you turn on the grid. So so this, this grid is the grid of our galactic plane. And when I turn on the exploration mode, you see that where we don't see far away galaxies is the along our galactic plane. And that's because the interstellar dust in the interstellar medium in the galactic plane obscures the view of the objects in this direction. So we don't see 
it's harder for us to see galaxies in this direction, but we do not believe that that doesn't mean they don't exist. Uh, you see this mentioned this cosmological principle in the um, in the um, in, in the uh, cosmological principle in the uh, chapter and the slides. So here, when I turn on the procedural object, it will populate the visible universe uniformly to reflect our belief that uh, that our uh, galaxy, our universe, is homogeneous and isotropic. 